Hey gang, Genome Presents is having a 100 subscriber contest. He wants to know our favorite cover, and it's this. Which I actually can't find, so this is a graphic, but it's the killing joke. And it's not just that it's a great Brian Bolin Joker, it's that it's conceptually brilliant. Most old-time comic book covers show a truncated scene from inside the comic. Or sometimes the cover concept was developed first, and then they wrote the story around that. But it was essentially a juicy scene from the story that tempted you into buying the comic. Most comics now are characters posing. And it looks pretty, but it has little to nothing to do with the story. And that tempts you into buying the mintiest copies. And in the last few years, Marvel especially has been doing these gag covers. It's like a one-panel visual gag, like Gold Key used to do for the animated characters. Like there's a an issue of The Vision where The Vision's dog is catching Captain America's shield like a frisbee. But that actually doesn't happen in the story. The dog is actually dead by the time The Vision fights the Avengers. Spoilers. Alan Moore broke convention with The Watchmen. He had the cover be a context-free image that was actually the first panel of the story, and you came to understand that as you read the comic. He broke convention again with The Killing Joke. This cover depicts the most pivotal scene from the story, and it actually doesn't appear in the story. We cut away before this scene happens. It's not till you read the story that you realize how vicious and vile this cover is. It's great. And he wants to know our favorite one-shot story. Uh, the Killing Joke. Next. He wants us to show our favorite nerd memorabilia. And it has to be this. Slides from the Thundercats. He's so detailed and he's the one Thundercat that doesn't get sticky. You Thundercats fans know what I'm talking about. But everyone else probably thinks I'm making a failed masturbation joke. And he wants to know a story that moves us emotionally. I find many scenes in Cerebus to be incredibly emotional. And though some can feel a little manipulative, they're always earned. A lot of comics that try to pull at your heartstrings are actually just manipulative and they don't earn it. It's like instead of trying to make you cry, they were trying to make you laugh. The types of moves they would use would be equivalent to like the wrestler in the tutu or the drunken swearing clown or the hacky move that would make you think, why does anyone find this funny? Why is this successful? I wouldn't laugh at it in a million years. They're doing that but for trying to pull your heartstrings. Andy wants to know what comic investment was the biggest letdown. Well sir, I have a few copies of this. Detective 735, the first in continuity appearance of Mercy Graves, Lex Luthor's secretary who has a cyborg arm that shoots lasers. I heard she was going to be in Batman vs. Superman, and I was hoping that she would have a few witty zingers and fun action scenes like in the Young Justice cartoon, and maybe she would blow up and become as big as Harley Quinn, and instead, they killed her in about five seconds. Andy wants us to shout out a YouTuber who we think deserves recognition. I'll say Mr. Miracle, whose contest I probably should have entered by now. You're supposed to show your best five finds of the year, and I've only found four. I, I don't find much. But soon I will do that video. I'll have his link in the description and I'll have Genome Presents link in the description and at the end of the video. So thank you to Genome Presents. Thank you for this contest. I'd like to prize tag whoever gets second place in the audience vote. But should I get first place in your choice and second place in the audience vote, the prize will go to first place in the audience vote. Thanks very much for watching and Happy New Year!